That was Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene receiving a very warm welcome from pro-choice demonstrators at the Supreme Court. Now, as you saw, she was very giddy about the downfall of women's rights in the United States. But the hecklers there weren't yelling at her because of her position on abortion rights. They were responding to the revelations that we learned about yesterday, specifically her participation in the January 6th insurrection and asking Trump's administration for a pardon. Hence why they were calling her a traitor and chanting, lock her up, which was just incredibly amazing to see. Now, um, I'm really shocked that she is bold enough to show her face today when, you know, she should be hiding her face, knowing that, you know, she was concerned about her criminality leading to her being prosecuted, hence the need for a pardon from Trump's administration. But she's out there, she's bold, and it's because she wants to celebrate the downfall of Roe v. Wade. Now, at the time that I record this, this is the scene outside of the Supreme Court. <laughs> Now, I do expect the number to grow, but uh, before there was any significant crowd outside the Supreme Court, well, riot cops decided to show up. Take a look. Yeah, ready to crack some skulls today, boys, aren't we? I mean... I don't understand how people can trust police in this country when they weren't this prepared after we all knew that it was likely that there would be violence on the Capitol on January 6th of 2021. But in anticipation of people protesting because they just had crucial constitutional rights taken away from them. Oh, they're ready. They're ready to beat your ass if you get out of line, get a little bit too rowdy. It's truly ridiculous, but people have to get it through their heads that the police are not there to protect the people. Protect and serve is a lie. They're there to protect property and elites, not you. They don't care about your civil rights. Now, um, just for context, for those of you who don't live in the United States and for those who are unaware how they're going to be affected by Roe v. Wade being overturned. Well, as Reuters reports, South Dakota, Louisiana, and Kentucky have trigger bans in place to immediately outlaw abortion once Roe is overturned. Penalties range from being charged with a felony to fines of up to $100,000 and up to 10 years in prison. Oklahoma approved an outright ban prior. Of the seven states with bans that take effect immediately or 30 days after Roe is overturned, only Idaho has an exception for pregnancies resulting from rape or incest. These six states have a trigger ban that takes effect after an official certifies that all or part of Roe v. Wade has been overturned. This certification process could be rapid, taking only hours or a couple of days. Nine other states do not have trigger bans, but have laws that restrict abortion access and would likely attempt to ban abortion outright as well. In total, these are the 22 states that either have or will be attempting to ban abortion access. We're talking about nearly two dozen states and counting. So this is a very dark day in American history, but yet people like Marjorie Taylor Greene were absolutely giddy to celebrate the downfall of women being able to control their bodies in the United States. And she was there at the Supreme Court, even if she knew that she'd be heckled because she wanted to gloat and post these videos to her Twitter. Take a look. This is so awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe they just did it. <laughs> this is so amazing. Okay. Hi, everyone. We are standing out uh, right in front of the Capitol uh, with the Supreme Court behind us and just rejoicing in the wonderful news from the Supreme Court 
and we're just so thankful for the brave Supreme Court justices and President Trump for uh, nominating them and, and putting them on the Supreme Court so that this day could finally come. This is how sick and twisted the modern day Republican Party is. But to be fair, they've always been this sick and twisted. Absolutely giddy to learn that women do not have control over their own bodies. Now, you might be thinking, shouldn't Marjorie Taylor Greene have some level of self-awareness and think this also affects me possibly negative, negatively as well? Well, the answer is no. She doesn't have to be concerned because the downfall of Roe v. Wade is going to exclusively affect poor women and disproportionately women of color. But wealthy women like Marjorie Taylor Greene, they don't have to worry. So if she's ever in a predicament where she unfortunately needs to get an abortion, if her life depends on it, she will have access to abortion. She can go to a blue state or pay for a doctor who's willing to do that for her under the table. Um, so, you know, what this is really going to do is push women in these states into unsafe, illegal abortions if they don't have the resources to travel to a blue state. And I argue that most women won't. So think about this. She's giddy. She's laughing. She's praising God, knowing that this is going to lead to women dying in the United States. People have this weird perception of abortion uh, and, and they think that, oh, well, women just flippantly go get abortions. You know, they use it exclusively as a form of birth control. And that's perfectly valid. They can do that if they want to. It's their fucking bodies. But a lot of the times women are forced to get abortions if they want to survive. They have miscarriages and then are forced to have abortions subsequently. So all of the women who will be harmed permanently who will be killed as a result of unsafe illegal abortions think back to this moment right now of people like marjorie green and other republicans celebrating because they call themselves pro-life but the blood of thousands of women in this country is going to be on their hands and this is just the beginning so buckle up folks so it's it's sick this is our elected officials celebrating the loss of civil rights that's where we're at in the united states of america